These three cocktails are on fire. We'll take a look at how some of your favorite bars achieve this and how you can safely set cocktails ablaze in your own home. Also, don't try this at home. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Tonight we're talking about fire and cocktails. Flaming drinks have a long history in cocktails dating all the way back to the Middle Ages. During this time, alcoholic beverages such as rum and brandy were warmed and then set ablaze and served to the people of the Middle Ages. This was done in part to help mask the taste of lower quality booze, but also for theatrical effect, just like in Tiki. One of the most famous flaming cocktails was from the 1800s. It's called the Blue Blazer. The origins of the Blue Blazer can be traced back to a gambling saloon in Gold Rush era San Francisco, where cocktail pioneer Jerry Thomas came up with the idea. In his 1862 Bartender's Guide, Thomas describes the drink as a blazing stream of liquid fire. Who wouldn't want to order that? Traditionally, it's made with cast strength whiskey, boiling water, sugar, and lemon peel. Now, the tricky part of this is actually mixing the cocktail because you're gonna put everything in one tin and then you can go from tin to tin. The last cocktail we're making tonight has a bit of that kind of flair to it. Tonight, we're making three cocktails that involve fire. Traditionally, they used 151 rum as the fuel, but I've recently been learning about some different techniques for making the fire bigger, bolder, more exciting. So we will be using the 151. We will also be using some pure lemon extract, as well as some sugar cubes and some bread. I would suggest using the heel of the loaf because why waste a perfectly good piece of bread? Okay, uh, there. We're gonna take a lime, slice it in half, and instead of the normal way of squeezing it face down so that the juice goes down, we are gonna flip it this way because all we're trying to do is squeeze out the juice, the pulp, and then make a little cup. Okay. Of course, you can use this with a spent lime shell from actually making a cocktail, but since we aren't making a cocktail at the moment, let me show you what it looks like. Check that out. It's like a little cup. Because we can save this lime juice for a little bit later. Let's put these guys back out here again. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put these lime shells out here. I just want the ice to prop them up. There's no reason, I'm, I'm not trying to cool this or anything. Okay, so there are three techniques we're gonna talk about when igniting a cocktail. The way that they traditionally did it was by pouring some 151 into the shell or into the volcano bowl, the volcano. But I've since learned that lemon extract really does a great job too. Actually probably a better job than just 151. We're gonna need a wick, like a fuse, like something for it to ignite. I've heard of bars using sugar cubes and even soaking them overnight in 151. I tried that and it turned into a big goopy mess. So I don't know if I would suggest soaking, well I'll tell you, I would not suggest soaking sugar cubes overnight in a jar like this. There are sugar cubes in here. I mean, you can see it. They've definitely gotten smaller than they used to be. Maybe we'll put one in here and see what happens. This is science, right? Also. Wow, that is 151 sugar. That is gnarly. From what I've heard, the most practical way about lighting a cocktail on fire is by using toast and lemon extract. So that'll be this one. We're gonna do it just in the shell here. We're gonna do it with a sugar cube here, and we're gonna do it with lemon extract here. We'll see what happens. We have to turn this into toast. I apologize that this is not a vintage toaster. Now we're toasting bread. One eternity later. Okay, there's some toast. I believe Martin Kate from Smuggler's Cove came up with this technique. They're very specific that it needs to be toast, not bread. I'm not sure why. We're gonna pour a little bit of lemon extract on there. And over here, we're gonna do some 151. When working with cocktails on fire, you always wanna use something like this, something that'll keep you away from it in case it decides to blow up on you or something. Okay, it's definitely lit. If you wanna see the fire a little bit better, you can sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top and it'll spark up a little bit. A pretty translucent flame, not exactly like worthy of an applause. Let's see what the next one does. This is just a rum soaked sugar cube. I don't think that's lighting. 
don't do the rum soak sugar cube thing like the way that I did it. This is all garbage. Let's try it with a fresh sugar cube. Now, the reason you would use a sugar cube is because you won't have any weird bread smell throughout your bar, but maybe that's the thing you want. Maybe you want a bread smell. I don't know. Okay, let's use 151 again. Let's see what this does. Okay, fire's going. Maybe a little more cinnamon so you can see. See that? So we have two fires going. Let's try this down here. It's the lemon extract and the toast. Okay, so you can definitely see that flame. What a difference that is. Look at that. Okay, so I think that our experiment has proven that the toast with the lemon extract works much better than the other two. Although I'm curious about lemon extract with a sugar cube. Let me just smell these real quick. It smells like lemon mixed with toast. This has a much more pleasant smell, although it is 151 mixed with sugar. That smell, oof, that smells like burning rum. Let me try one more thing. We're gonna use a sugar cube and we're gonna put some lemon extract on that. Say you don't like the idea of burnt toast smell in your bar. Let's see what this does. It's almost a taller flame. I wonder if there's a difference with like the amount of bread. Now I've also heard that you can use croutons. So if you have croutons laying around, maybe try that. Okay, here's more toast with more lemon extract. I'd say that those flames are very similar. So maybe what it comes down to is smell and whether or not you wanna be looking at a melting sugar cube or some burnt toast. I don't know. The burnt toast is certainly working very well though. And I wonder if it would last longer. Looks like the burnt toast is actually getting to be a little bit stronger of a flame. This may be the winner. Now that we have that, let's make a cocktail, present it the way that you would see it in a bar. Look at the difference in the flame. That is incredible, isn't it? Okay, I hadn't planned on doing this, but we're gonna make a Cobra's Fang real quick. There's a half an ounce of lime juice from the limes that we were squeezing earlier. We need a half an ounce of orange juice. Okay. The recipe calls for a half an ounce of passion fruit syrup, a quarter ounce of falernum, six drops of absinthe or Pernod, and one dash of Angostura bitters. And of course, one and a half ounces of 151 Demerara rum. Now to make this cocktail in the traditional 1937 way, you would normally hit it with a Hamilton Beach mixer. But since the shaking tins are right here, we're just gonna quickly shake this. Tins are frosty and cold. And pour it into a Spikes Breezeway cocktail hour Mai Tai glass. Add some ice to fill. Who's Phil? All right, now we're gonna take a fresh lime shell. I like using this one better than this one for making these little cups because this part's really the same size as the lime. It makes like the perfect size little cup. See, when you pull this thing off, it's like right there. Okay, we're gonna sit that on top. Let's grab a piece of toast, put it in the middle, a little bit of lemon extract. Be sure not to pour this into your drink. That'll ruin your drink. And light it. Now, if you're making these things at home, or if you're a commercial bar, you wanna make sure that you don't light it and then give it to the patron and let them just walk off with it because they're gonna be carrying fire. That could be a disaster, especially if that lemon extract spills on somebody or on the floor. You really have to be very mindful of what's going on with this drink. Make sure the patrons aren't too drunk to handle this kind of responsibility. It is a bit of a liability, but if you throw a little bit of cinnamon on there, you get a little bit of a sparkle, the way that they do it at the Golden Tiki, is they have a little atomizer. Atomizer? Maybe. It's a little sprayer, like a, yeah, a little sprayer. If you put 151 in here and you get right up on it, you can get this really cool flame effect. Don't do it around anybody wearing a lot of hairspray. That's a bad idea. If you do that in combination with some cinnamon, you get a dramatic effect. Look at that. Also, make sure you have water or an extinguisher nearby in case you need to put it out because this could turn into a mess very quickly. Have you ever seen one of these before? This is called a volcano bowl. This was served in the 1950s and 60s. It is made by Orchids of Hawaii, one of the premier producers of tiki mugs back in the 50s and 60s. But there's this little volcano in the middle. And so the idea is that it's a communal bowl. You can have like four of your friends sit around on each corner there with a long ass, with a long straw, and then there's fire in the middle. So it's like an island of fire. It's rad. Usually a scorpion is served in a volcano bowl. So let's go ahead and make one of those real quick. 
All right, the cocktail that we're gonna make next is the Scorpion Bowl. Okay, we're gonna start with six ounces of orange juice. That's right, there's a lot of orange juice in this cocktail. And it's a big cocktail because it serves three to four people. Four ounces of lemon juice. One and a half ounces of orgeat. That is so much orgeat, but it is a big drink. So, you know, what are you gonna do? Six ounces of light rum. And one ounce of brandy. Go on, brandy. Okay, I didn't set up the blender, so I'm gonna go off and do that real quick. Blend this. Okay, we're back from the blender. Go ahead and pour that in here. Now, it'll fill it up about halfway, but what you wanna do is you wanna fill all the way to the top. And for this kind of drink, you wanna use small ice cubes. These are bigger than I would prefer, but the idea is that you just wanna fill up the drink just about to the level of the rim here. And of course, the part that everybody loves about this is the fire in the middle. Now the issue that I have is that so many bars do this and they put a lime shell in the volcano and you go, uh, what kind of volcano has a giant lime sticking out of it? I understand it's probably easier for them to clean that or whatever, but the way that I would do it if I had myself a professional bar is I'd use the bread because the sugar cubes are gonna get it all sticky and gooey and gross and make it impossible to clean. The bread lifts out easy. It's a big tall flame. And by bread, I do mean toast because it does seem to make a big difference. Now, if you use 151 in here, I, it's always funny, like if somebody wants to try to slurp out the 151, that's kind of gross, especially like burnt 151. But if you really want the dramatic flame, as we've noticed, yeah, use lemon extract and buy it in these big containers. Otherwise, like you're gonna pay a fortune. It's so expensive. And so I present to you, in the glass that it was served in, Scorpion Bowl, in the Volcano Bowl. It, how rad is this experience? This imbibing experience. This is the kind of thing, like this takes me away instantly to Smuggler's Cove in San Francisco, where the lights are dark. And, and, well, like this, with all the nautical stuff and tiki's and all this stuff. And there's a lone fire flickering off in the distance. You can hit it with a little bit of cinnamon sparkles. This is the kind of thing that I live for in Tiki. It's the presentation. It's the show. It's escapism. Yeah, it's rad. Don't use too much cinnamon because if you use too much cinnamon, it'll cinnamony up your drink. Cinnamon up your drink. Cinnamony up. Cinnamony up. Cinnamony up. Cinnamony up. Oh no. I think the Cobra Spain got to me. It's a good drink. I always remember doing the Volcano Bowl with some 151 and you really couldn't see the flame. So this is very exciting that you can do a volcano bowl that is fully flamed out. Everybody can see it. Again, some safety tips for you. If you're gonna make this cocktail, light it where you're gonna serve it. Don't leave the people to enjoy the cocktail without it being extinguished or at least be there. Make sure that there's a fire extinguisher handy. This is dangerous stuff. Fire is dangerous stuff. I'm also not giving you any advice to do this at home, seriously. I'm a trained professional, kind of. One safety tip is to make sure that you're using long, long straws. You can go to like 7-Eleven uh, and get those super long plastic straws if you want for Slurpees, or you can get this fairly long straws from Surfside Sips. Enter Breezeway in the coupon code and you'll get a little bit of a discount. You'll help support the show. They'll keep you good and far away from the flame. Ooh, that is tangy, tangy and tart. Find yourself a vintage volcano bowl. Make this one at home with some friends. It's a fun communal way to celebrate the whole tiki experience. There is one last drink presentation that I wanna show you guys. It's from one of my favorite bars in the whole world, the Mai Kai. And they had a drink called the Kona Coffee Grog. It's this elaborate presentation where they pour fire, just like the Blue Blazer, just like the very beginning. So we're gonna do that next. Before we get to that, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. There's so many more videos of us making cocktails from the golden age of tiki. And if you're interested in this and you wanna help support, join the Patreon. I will send you this enamel pin and I'll give you opportunities to buy merch before it goes on sale to the general public. Like this. Because this episode's all about fire, we created matches for the Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I would show you the inside. But in the tradition of the 1950s and 60s matches, there's nudity inside. So if you wanna buy some of these matches, you can find them in the link in the description below. And I think you guys will dig these things. They're so cool on the inside. The matches actually have illustrations on them, just like they used to do in the old days. Just like these matches here from old bars. Okay, let's figure out that Mai Kai cocktail now. 
All right, the last cocktail we're gonna do is from this book, Hawaii Tropical Rum, Drinks and Cuisine by Don the Beachcomber. This was actually not by Don the Beachcomber. This is by his ex-wife and her new husband, which is uh, odd. But the Kona Coffee Grog in here is very similar to what they serve at the Mai Kai. Now the presentation is probably a little bit different, but Mariano Liquidini, who came from Don the Beachcomber, brought a lot of his recipes from Don the Beachcomber to the Mai Kai. So with that, I feel comfortable doing this and saying that this is probably close to the Mai Kai recipe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up the Breezeway stove. We haven't seen that in a while. We're gonna put this uh, this little pan on here. I don't know if you're allowed to do that with this kind of pan, but whatever, I don't know. I'm not a chef, dude. Okay, we're gonna start with two cups of hot Kona coffee. Three teaspoons of a honey cream mix. Now this is just one to one butter and honey and it is delicious. Okay, get in there. We're just gonna stir it around in there. Okay, there it goes. Okay, now the way that they do it at the Mai Kai and the way you used to do it at Dawn the Beachcomber is they would have a big ceramic pitcher. We don't have a ceramic pitcher, but we do have this ceramic mug right here. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one ounce of dark Jamaican rum in here, as well as one ounce of 151 Demerara rum. We're gonna be using the lemon heart for this. Now it also says that we need four strips of lemon peel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this. It's like a little peel right there. Of course you could use a fruit peeler for this kind of thing. And then we need four orange peels. Two, three, and four. Okay, so we have those things marinating in here together with the cinnamon, the rum, the orange peel, and the lemon peel. It says that we're gonna pour the coffee into a coffee grog glass. I didn't go all the way to the top, though it's very close. Okay, let's see if this works. This does not always work for me, but the 151 rum and the citrus of the peels should ignite. We're gonna grab an orange peel, ignite that. Look at that burn. We're gonna light the rest of the drink inside and look at that. The Kona Coffee Grog. What an amazing cocktail. And with that, please be sure to be careful when working with fire and cocktails. It is very dangerous. And if you're interested in more creative cocktail presentations, click the link right here. Check out the Saturn. If you found this helpful or informative, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We'll see you next week. Aloha.